Hey guys, and welcome to another MLDO Compositions tutorial. Now, this is the 16th tutorial in the First Steps in Preparation series, and today I'm coming at you with a rather exciting tutorial. At least I think it's exciting. It is about the compositor. Um, and in Blender, with the compositor, you can very easily enhance your images with, at least for the first few basic enhancements, with very little... Um, extra work you have to do. So let's just open up a new window of Blender and um, make sure it says Blender Render up here as always. And then let me just first of all explain something else to you. You can see up here we already talked a little about those things. You can see default. And if you click here you can see a number of options. And those are so to say pre-arranged um, user interfaces, layouts, okay? So you can switch between them either by choosing them over here or just by clicking control left or right key on your keyboard, okay? So now if you hit control left key, you can see it says compositing and that is exactly what we're going to use today. And this way you can actually um, keep your user interface from becoming messy because then you can kind of just work on modeling things over here and then with control left arrow you can just go on to compositing and then you have animation video editing uv editing scripting and game logic and then we're back at default and that's just a much more <clears throat> organized way to switch between layouts because if you just change your user interface and stuff then um as you can see it's quite a drastic change between this layout and this one and it takes quite a lot of time to rearrange it accordingly. So always try to use those um, shortcuts if possible. Uh, I don't use them enough uh, myself, by the way, because I didn't even know about them in the, in the very beginning when I started with Blender and it kind of became a very bad habit of mine to just do everything manually. But uh, yeah, I'll try my best not to do that with you guys. So, decompositor. Um, with the compositor, you can make a few very cool adjustments um, to your already finished image. So, in order to demonstrate that, let's just set up a simple scene for now. And we will then also work with that scene in the next few tutorials, because I won't be able to cover the, the, the compositor uh, thoroughly in just one episode. So let's just do something similar as we did when covering the Mist and Star features. Let's just scale it along the um, C-axis, like this. Let's just move it up here. Let's just select the top vertices. Um, and then let's go out of edit mode, because now the selection is saved, also for duplications. Let's go to 7, and let's just go to 5 on your numpad, so it's an orthographic view, and just, let's just reposition them in a way... So we kind of have to have some depth in our scene and something there and something there, okay? Now we can just... As you can see now, um, the selection is saved for every one of them. This we can just easily resize them. Something like this. And let's also with Shift-C reposition our 3D cursor. And with Shift-A let's add a plane scale that up and now let's reposition our camera to somewhere over here and let's just change that to be a sun lamp um, let's make it slightly yellowish like this let's then go to environment lighting let's make that slightly bluish actually um, sky color energy of 0.5 um, slightly bluish color there and then let's also make sure that it's actually the Sun actually creates a sky and then we should be good to go for now okay not too bad we need more environment lighting though and we just need to increase that to something like that Okay, that's not too bad. It doesn't really need to look good. It just needs to look like something. Um, okay, now, um, this is our finished image, or our finished render. And now let's just 
actually let's do one last thing to improve it a little bit let's just go to samples of five and the soft size of 20. okay now with um escape we are once again in our um 3d viewport let, let's do one thing let's go to um, display on the, under the uh, render properties. Let's go to display not in the image editor, but in a new window. Okay, and now we can just take this window and um, well put it somewhere on a separate screen or somewhat. You don't really need to see it anyway. So now we go to um, to compositing. Let's just hit Control Left Arrow, and this is our compositing layout. So we have and the node editor up here. We have a UV image editor over here and we have our 3D viewport over here. Now we don't need the 3D viewport here in my opinion and we also for this thing we don't need the timeline okay so let's just um, eliminate the timeline and let's change the 3D viewport to a UV image editor as well okay and then um, yeah let's talk about the node editor you can see it's just node editor is one of the the menus you can choose from um, from those icons. Um, usually, we talked about na uh, by now we talked mainly about the three D viewport, but now we're talking about the node editor. And you can see over here you got two major options. You've got materials or material nodes. You got or, or shader nodes as they're called or texture nodes or compositing nodes and if you check compositing nodes then you're actually in the compositor and um, in order to work you have to select use nodes and one other cool thing is backdrop because now you can actually see the image of your viewer output as a backdrop okay and um, then down here you can also see uh, those two UV image editors and then you can either change render result which is just your render result or you can choose viewer node and you can see right now nothing happens because we need to add a viewer node into our compositor so with shift a output let's add a viewer node and now in order to connect a node this by the way this is a node um, to the viewer just hit control shift and left click on that particular node and it automatically connects it to the viewer not to the compositor composite comp composite node but to the viewer node and now um, as you can see they are the exact same images because we didn't modify the image in any way right now but now let's just do that real quick let's add a color correction node so let's just hit shift a under color let's go to color balance over here and if you move it and if you just hover over one of those connecting lines then it, they turn orange and if you then drop it you can see it automatically connects it now you can just select um, left click on that node socket over here and connect it to the composite as well and now let's make quite a drastic change here by the way the color balance we will talk more about it in in, in the future tutorial about the compositor but you can basically um, change or influence the, the dark tones, the mid tones, and the, uh, the light tones, okay? Lift, gamma, and gain. So let's just change the dark tones to something blue, the mid tones to something red, and the bright tones to something green, which looks ridiculous. Um, but you, but it, it, you can see the point. And you can see um, the render result as well as the viewer node have changed, okay? And that doesn't really make much sense to look at the same image twice so let's just over here under um, slot one or just under those options here you can actually choose what what part of your render result is being is, is being um, displayed okay and right now it says composite but you can also go to render layer and this is the render layer this is your render layer node and this is your composite node okay so that's your you, the input into your scene and that is actually the output that goes that is then um, well, well the final result not this one the viewer is just so you can actually um, visualize the different parts of your composite tree of your node tree and the composite is actually the one that that, that uh, tells blender where what, what is the final image and now you can see this difference so now you can just change something over here 
make it mainly something slightly more reasonable and then you can see um, the difference and whether you like it or not. Uh, yeah, and as you can see it is completely in useless right now if we have the 3D view here because we can really not do much with that. Therefore, that much, makes much more sense. Um, yeah. So now about the user, about the interface, um, yeah, about the user interface in the compositor. Let's just select this node and let's hit Control X to delete it, but to restore the connections. Like this. Okay. Um, this is kind of like your standard situation. You've got like a render layer, an input, and you've got a composite node, which is the output, and the viewer node, which actually makes you enables you to. Um, look at your image as a backdrop. And then with N on your keyboard, you can uh, make the, uh, the properties panel appear. And the properties panel is quite simple in the node editor. You can see you have three tabs. The active node, which is just whatever you've selected. And in case you have, let's just re uh, bring this color balance back and if you have like a, a slightly more complex node here you can see under active node all the possible settings of that node are being displayed and they can al also be changed there and you can always um, label your active node so you can say this because usually it's just it's just called render layers okay and you can see that this render layers is the exact same as over here but even if you change that to render layers four or whatever, you can see it doesn't change how the node is named over here. Okay, so if you want to rename them, just um, enter something as the label, for example, input. You can see it's called input. And if you delete that, it's once again render layers. Um, yeah, and then you can just go to toggle hidden sockets. And then those sockets, like the alpha channel and the uh, C, the depth channel, uh, are being hidden because they're not used. Only the image channel is shown because that one's actually used. Now, um, if you um, make all the connections disappear, now if you go to toggle hidden so node sockets, then all of them disappear because none of them are used. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, and here, as you can see, the two options that you also have over here, um, and those are node specific. And then we've got the grease pencil, and as in object mode, or just in the 3D viewport, with the left click, you can actually draw things if you want to point something out, or if you want to make a note or something. And then it automatically creates um, a new data block and a new frame. And then if you don't need those anymore, you can just delete them works the exact same way as in the 3D viewport. And then we also have backdrop. That's the thing we have um, over here. And you can first of all choose what, in what way it's supposed to be displayed, okay? Just the alpha channel, just the color, or color and alpha. And you can also do that down here. You can see if you change that, it also changes it up here. And if you can see, you can, and you can see if you go to um, color and alpha, it actually considers that there's nothing in the scene over there and therefore it just doesn't display it anymore, okay? So if you want to make a transparent image, then you can actually see what you're doing. You can also go to alpha only and then you can only see the alpha or just color, those three options. And then you have zoom and this way you can actually zoom in and out of your backdrop image. Um, like this, pretty self-explaining. One is default. And, but you can also do that in a much easier way because you don't always want to go over there. You can just um, hit V on your keyboard to zoom out and Alt V to zoom in. And then you can see it adjusts the zoom over here, this value, um, with quite some delay, but it does it eventually. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, or as I just noticed, it always refreshes it if you hover over it, so... Boop. Yeah, okay. And then you have the offset, which is just its position on the X and Y axis. And you can also do that much easier with just hitting Alt, P, 
pressing your middle mouse wheel and then just dragging it around. Okay, and if you just press your middle mouse wheel, then you're just manipul manipulating the notes. Um, same goes with uh, scrolling, then you just manipulate or zoom in and out of the notes, but the backdrop stays untouched. And in order to move it, you can also just click on move. Then you can move it and with left click you can position it. But it's really bothersome and I don't think anyone does that. Um, so yeah, cool. That's basically everything already for the properties panel. So let's hide that again with N. And then let's talk about this lower menu over here. So we have view, which is as in the other menus or in the 3D viewport, for example. It's just um, what, of what is actually seen of your node tree. Then you have select, some different means to select nodes. Then you can add nodes or other things. And then you can also manipulate your nodes, okay? Most of those um, terms are quite self-explaining, but we'll uh, go through them one by one anyway. So, uh, first of all, you can just hide or unhide those, those uh, menus. And then let's actually first of all talk about those over there. So we already, let's just delete that. We already talked about use nodes. If you don't do that, then no, nodes are used in your scene and therefore you don't need to bother with the compositor. So check use nodes always. And then free unused. That's something that took me a while to figure out actually. Um, if you have, let's just add a color balance. And by the way, you can cut connections. I'm more about that in the node menu. You can cut connections by hitting control, left click, and then you get this knife and then you can just draw over those lines and they just disappear. And now let's just input a few color balance nodes. We won't really use them for anything. They're just, and with B you can box select. Just, I just need to make a point here, okay? And then just select all of them. Like this. And that's it F to fill. And you can see that they are all automatically being connected. And then it's just also connected to the viewer node. And you can see it already takes some time to um, composite it because it's quite, it's got quite, a, it's, got, it's got quite a few nodes in your scene already. And color balance nodes are quite um, time intensive. They take a lot of time to be calculated. So now let's just make a slight adjustment in all of them, just so. We can actually see a difference from image to image. So this is your this is our final image, and right now, um, in order to get to that image, this render layer, the original image, which is the one over here, has to go through all those different nodes step by step, and then it goes through this node, and then you have an output socket, and then you have an image over here that is changed from the original. Then this image goes into this node where it's changed again, and it's over there, and then to the next, and so on. And by default, Blender saves all those images. Um, and they are being stored in your memory, okay? And in order to illustrate that, let's just right-click on our um, task bar or whatever that's called. Uh, unfortunately, I've got a German menu here, so I'm not quite sure what it is in English. But then just go to the um, task manager. I think that's the same in English. And then let's go to this tab over here where you, where you can see your CPU usage and your RAM usage. And then you can see the current RAM usage is 2.52 gigabytes. Now obviously most of that is from my operating system which I think uses just about 2 gigabytes in standby. <clears throat> but anyway, um, yeah let's just keep that on the side here so we can actually see what if, if something changed over there. And now if I want to take a look at what it, what this image would look like without this last node, then I can just hit Control shift and left click on this one. And that, that's automatically the one that's being connected to the viewer if I use that combination. You can also just um, click on that socket and just, just um, yeah, connect them like this. But Control shift left click is much faster. And you can see it doesn't take any time to calculate it because um, the images are, are still being stored in that socket, so to say, okay? But that also needs, a, needs, needs RAM because they need to be saved somewhere. So if you go to free unused, and now if you connect it somewhere, you can see 
um, the usage drops to 2.48 gigabytes. And now the image has to be calculated from a new every time you change the node because the images are no longer being saved. Now with such a small scene it makes uh, a ridiculously small difference of like well, let me see 40 megabytes but if you have a very complex scene then this makes actually quite a big difference from several hundred megabytes. So yeah keep that in mind. And one thing um, we we saw that already in one of the previous tutorials about the render properties. Under render properties you can also make that adjustment under performance and then you have free unused nodes and you can see it automatically unchecks or checks the corresponding one in the other menu. But for now let's go without free unused nodes because we yeah, it can be much faster. Um, cool. Now Next thing is backdrop, we already talked about that. If we don't have that, then you, it just doesn't show the image from the viewer output. So usually you want to check that. And then, as I said before, you can just choose between the mode, how it is being displayed and what is being displayed. And then you have auto render. And let's just select that. And now let's actually change that down here to, to 3D view. And now, whenever I change something, it automatically renders your image. And that's usually not something you want, because usually your scene takes more than just um, 3.27 seconds to render, okay? Um, yeah, usually a normal scene takes about two to between two and four minutes, or yeah. And therefore, if it automatically starts rendering whenever you move something, uh, you, you'd always have to break the operation because it just takes too much time. But if you for very specific cases where you have very low poly, very simple low poly objects where you just want to test something, maybe that can come in handy, I don't know. And also one thing to note is that if you want it to automatically render, you need to make sure that you have some kind of UV image, UV image editor open where it's ca it can be rendered into. That's why I separated the render output over here, okay? Because if I, if I close that, um, and if I go back to uh, image editor, then you can see I change something and it renders it. Then I change it again and it still renders it. But um, what was the point I was trying to make? Give me just a second here. If I go to I don't know, text editor over here, then you can see Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> Sorry. What I want to say is that um, if Blender takes my node editor window and changes that automatically into my uh, UV image editor for the rendered output, then that auto oh, that only works once and afterwards um, it, it doesn't re-render the scene anymore, okay? So you need to make sure that your node editor is open somewhere. Doesn't matter where. So... home okay so that it actually um, executes that command so you need to make sure because now you can see it works it, it works again no it doesn't auto render now it works so uh, the window in which you have auto render checked needs to be open somewhere otherwise it doesn't work that was my point finally um, okay so let's just rearrange it the way it was before let's just move that over there and uh, let's just Change that to UV image editor, render result, and that one to UV image editor, viewer node. Perfect. And here we go to node editor. Okay. Now, um, with view, you have like more or less your usual options. Toggle full screen. By the way, you can do that in every window. If you hit control up or down arrow, you would switch between making that one full screen or not. And that's a very fast method if you want to. I don't know if you need more space for modeling for a short amount of time or, or something. Um, then the other thing is just duplicate area into new window. Um, but an easier way to do that, by the way, I didn't even tell you how to. If you want to, like I did before, if you want to duplicate, for example, um, the render output into a separate window, just hit shift and then click on that as if you want to split the area 
and it automatically splits it into a separate new window. Can be quite handy. Uh, so yeah, good thing to know. And then you can just move it to wherever you want. Um, yeah, the next thing is uh, backdrop zoom out, zoom in, and backdrop move. As I said, Alt V to zoom in, V to zoom out, and Alt Alt middle mouse wheel click to drag it around. And then we also have view all is home. This is very important, by the way. Home. This is just a home button on your numpad because if you do something stupid like this then by all means it's very difficult to find where your notes are, or nearly impossible. The thing to do is just press home and you can see they are back um, nicely centered. Um, next thing is zoom out, zoom in, wheel out, wheel in, just scroll on your wheel if you have one, or you can also just, um, if you only have a third mouse button, just hit control, click your mouse wheel and then you can just or your third mouse button then you just can just zoom like that by dragging your mouse around and and then the properties with n okay next thing is select there are a few weird ways to select things the easiest is border select shortcut is b which speeds things up um drastically uh, and then the next thing is select or deselect all with a as in all the menus or in all the, the windows, or in all the um, um, different menus, or editor types, uh, then you can select linked from. So if you select the color balance, then if you, if you hit L, you can see it is linked from this node. And then that one's linked from there, and so on. And with Shift L, I think it's Shift L, yeah, you can select linked too. So if you select your color balance with Shift L, it selects the next one, and the next one, and the next one and so on. And then you have a uh, select same type, so if you select your color balance and then you go to shift G apparently, you can see everything, all the other color balance, color balance nodes are being selected as well. And then we also have select same type, we just did that, select same type next and previous. Uh, that's a bit tricky, I, don't, I never really got that, but if you select the color balance and that color balance and that color balance, then with shift J it doesn't do anything as well. Give me just a second here. Yeah, it does something. Oh, this is not, yeah. Yeah, not really something you use usually, but it just selects the previous or the next thing, but... Nah, I don't get it. Anyway, not really important, um, in my opinion. And then you can add all the different notes. And we're going to talk about all the notes in the next tutorial because there are a lot of notes, as you can see. You've got all kinds of notes for all the different things you can do for masking, for color correction, for kind of filters, blurs, um, defocus notes, etc. etc. So that really needs to be in a separate tutorial. I don't even think we can cover all of that, and most certainly not in just most certainly not in just one tutorial, but yeah, more on that later. And then finally there is Node. And um, Translate, Rotate and Resize, you can see the shortcuts are R, G, R and S. We are quite familiar with them by now. However, they work a bit differently in the Node Editor because you cannot really scale up a node with S. Or you cannot, you cannot rotate a node either. You can only manipulate, um, so to say, the origins of those nodes, okay? So if you select two nodes, and if you scale them, you can see they go apart or they move away from each other, and with rotate, they just rotate around each other without being rotated themselves, just only their position can be changed or manipulated, not their size or their individual rotation. With B, you can just select all the color balance nodes, and then you can just scale them together if you want, for whatever reason you, should, you want to do that, or you can rotate them, or you can, yeah, just you just have a few options to rearrange them. Um, usually, it's a good idea to arrange them in a neat way from the beginning, because especially if you have like a very big node tree, then that can help. Um, but yeah, it's just, just, just nice to know that you can use those. Then duplicate is quite self-explaining. Um, oh, one last thing. Right now I'm unhappy with the way they are arranged, so I'd like to go back with Ctrl Z. However, with Ctrl Z, for some reason, all 
those um, all the composited things are being lost. So if I go to Control Set, no, they're not. Well, usually they are. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now we back to where we were before. Um, Shift D, quite self explain You just select a node. You can duplicate it, and you can enter it somewhere, or you can just do it with it wherever you want. And then you can also with Control X. Um, with X you can delete something. Okay, that's not funny. Um, that's not funny at all. Give me just a second here, try to restore um, this. Okay, hey guys, here I'm back. Um, one thing I could also show you is under File, Recover Auto Save. Um, Blender automatically saves your scene from time to time. The last one for me was luckily at 14.09, and now it's 14.10, so I didn't lose a lot. Um, yeah, that's just your way to restore your lost things. Because if you go to File, Recover Last Session, it kind of never, never really works. So you should always go with Recover Autosave. Um, anyway, what I wanted to point out is, okay, now my thing is messed up again, my arrangement here. Mm. Okay, here we go. As that, you can just duplicate something, that's where we were, Shift-D. You can with Delete or with X, you can delete it. Control z And with Control x it deletes it, but it kind of keeps the connection there. Which is quite handy and can save you a lot of time. And then the next thing is um, Make Links, Make and Replace Links, and Cut Links. Okay, Cut Links first. Just hit Control and then just you get this knife tool, you can just Draw over a few lines and they are being deleted. Control Z. And then F is also quite self-explaining. If you have two nodes selected, hit F and they're being connected. Or also, you can also do that with a lot of nodes. So for example, you can go like this, F, and you can see it auto automatically connects them as well as it can. Then you have like, you like have to make the final connections at some point. And um, one other thing is make and replace links. The difference here is right now if I select the render layers and shift select the color balance, if I hit F, you can see it automatically connects the alpha to the factor value because there's already something in the image. But if I go to, if I select the render layers and this color balance and if I hit control F, you can see it makes the um, primary connection, so to say, and automatically replaces the one that was there previously. Uh, yeah, that's the difference between those two. And then we have um, edit group, ungroup, and group. A quite a cool feature. Uh, by the way, at the moment, this is under development, so soon enough you'll be able to create groups within groups, but right now you can't do that with this version. In order to create a group, just select um, any number of nodes like this and just hit G on your or shift okay with G that's translating but it's control G and you can see this is a very neat way to arrange your uh, your node tree because now we have on this very um, neat node over here just one single node and with tab you can actually open it up and you can see what's inside this group you have an input and you have an output and um, yeah, it's just great. And as I said, in the future, you'll be able to control G right now because you can then create subgroups, but you can see right now it doesn't work. And then you also have like uh, the path of your group down here. So it's very, very cool. I'm quite excited for that. And yeah, in order to create a new output, let me just see if that works. Yeah, you can see, just just drag a connection over there. You can see it automatically adds a new output. And then you can also just switch the position there of where it is, like this. And same goes for over there, I believe. And let me just see. I think it's not quite that easy to... Oh, you can also create um, new inputs, okay? So with tab you can go out of that and with um, alt G you can undo the group like this. 
Um, yeah, Alt G, undo, Control G, create a group and edit group with tab. And then you can also hide a few things. First thing is H, hit H and your nodes are being minimized. They are not hidden completely because you obviously need them so you can still see the flow of the nodes, but y yeah, everything except for a very um, basic um, shape is hidden away so it doesn't get in your way. With H again, you can unhide them. And then you have um, toggle node preview, toggle hidden sockets and toggle node options, okay? So if you select the color balance and if you go to toggle node options, you can see everything that this node basically stands for is being hidden, okay? So all the adju adjustments you can make, they're all being hidden. Not something you usually do a lot because you actually want to change something maybe. Um, with Control H and C Shift H, you can hide different parts of your node. Um, with Control H, you can just um, hide all the unused sockets, in this case, the factor socket. And with Shift H, you can't hide everything here because that actually hides the preview window, I think. So if you select your viewer node and if you hit Shift H, you can see the preview window. Preview window is being hidden. Um, cool. And then we also have um, toggle node mute. So right now, let's just hit F12 to actually re-render the scene because uh, when I restarted Blender, it kind of deleted it like this okay right now you can see it's this ugly red that, that's just because of this socket because i have this ugly pink color over here and if i don't want that if i, if I want to see hmm does that look better or worse than the previous result just hit m and then you can see it mutes this um this node and that is indicated by this red line because that just says okay the image comes from here and then it just passes through this red line without considering this node and then going on over here and this way you can just very easily um, compare the results. Um, and then finally we've got those three options up here. And let's not bother with them just now because we really don't need them for now. Um, yeah, let's talk about those in a future tutorial. Okay, I think for this tutorial this is enough. Um, one last thing maybe, you can add notes over here, but you can also just hit, as I showed you before, Shift A, which is much faster. And then you also have all the different um, note types to select from. Um, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. If you have any kind of questions or whatever, just post it in the comments as always. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.